Hello, Bettys. Welcome back to another episode of Better with Dr. Stephanie. It's me, your host, Dr. Stephanie Estima. And today I am bringing you a conversation with Dr. Don Lehman. He is the OG on proteins and amino acids. So get ready for a masterclass on that. I think we all start with muscle and we think about mobility and we think about athletes. But certainly as we get older, our functional mobility is a big issue. I always like to, you know, make people aware that you know, for people who get beyond 60, 65, one of the major problems with long-term health is falls and breaking fractures and things. There are 300,000 hip fractures per year in the United States, and one-third of those people never leave the hospital. So mobility and, and becoming more frail and all that is a major issue for keeping muscles healthy. So that's certainly part of it. And and related to that, I think one of the things people don't understand is that we're continuously rebuilding our muscle proteins. Every protein in the, in the body has a finite lifetime, and we have to make somewhere between 250 and 300 grams of new protein per day. And so people think, well, I'm eating 65 or 100 or 165 grams of protein but I still have to make 300. So that sort of says, you know, metabolism is more complex than just, you know, I eat 100 grams of protein and therefore I make 100. I mean, that's not how it works. So, you know, I think that whole process is critical. That leads us into the metabolism. Muscle makes up, you know, somewhere around 45% of our body weight and a huge amount of protein. It's very involved in each of the macronutrients. So I'll you know, protein, carbohydrate, and fat are all heavily metabolized there. And I think it's important that we think about each of them. Just from a standpoint of protein, since I started with that, we're making 250, 300 grams of protein per day. Only about 25% of that actually goes to muscle. The rest of it's for organs. And the organs always have a first priority. And so muscle is sort of the second priority at a meal. And that's why the meals become very important. And so we have that constant turnover. People often will talk about thermogenesis or how much uh, when you eat and protein has a higher thermogenic rate. If you read freshman nutrition, it'll say, well, it's because it's harder to digest and absorb. But that's not it at all. The issue is muscle protein turnover is a very expensive process. The other part, carbohydrate and fat, Muscle is really a central part of metabolism of both carbohydrates and fat. So people who have insulin resistance, insulin resistance begins in muscle. Muscle basically has a need for carbohydrates, but really only for high-end muscle performance. The basic fuel for muscle is actually fats. And so when we think about regulation of blood glucose and fatty acids, it all begins in muscle. If muscles are healthy, our chances of not having diabetes go, you know, we're protected. If muscles are healthy, our blood lipids are more stable. Protein is really just sort of a food source of amino acids. It's kind of like a vitamin pill. It's, we don't really have a need for the pill. We have a need for the 14 vitamins inside of it. And that's really what protein is. Protein is like a vitamin pill. It's simply a food source that delivers amino acids. There are 20 amino acids that we call naturally occurring that are in our food. And as you mentioned, 11 of them we can actually make. So if we get one amino acid, we could actually make a different one from it. But there are nine that we actually have a daily requirement for, and we call those essential or indispensable. And of those each of those have metabolic roles. We always think about, you know, again, freshman nutrition, amino acids are building blocks for new protein, which is true, but they also have individually metabolic roles. And so an amino acid like lysine is directly used for the formation of carnitine, which directs fatty acid oxidation. Phenylalanine is the direct precursor to tyrosine, which is important for dopamine in the brain and cognitive function and, and, metab and uh, memory, uh, tryptophan, serotonin for mood. All of these 
uh, are very related to the amount you eat. So if you have a very low protein diet, all of these other functions, mood, cognitive function, memory, fatty acid oxidation, all of those are downplayed. Another one I like is threonine. 75% of the threonine in your diet goes for producing the mucin in the lining of your gut. So we talk about prebiotics and probiotics. Probably the most important one is threonine, which produces the protective lining. And then, you know, my favorite, which I know you know, is leucine, which is a direct relationship for a signal to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So there's lots of these metabolic roles. And I actually published two papers in the last year arguing it's time that we stop talking about protein. It's like saying we need a vitamin pill and start talking about the nine essential amino acids because that's what we actually need 